Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be improving on our cryptocurrency trading bot using the Poloniex API. Uh, you probably want to watch part one first, I'll add a link here and in the description of this video. You probably recall that the visual feedback we were getting from our bot was a bunch of really long numbers spit out unceremoniously to the command line. Uh, while technically functional, it can be really difficult to see your backtesting results and see if your bot really is working like you expect. Um, so today, uh, we're going to enhance that and get it so that we can actually look at a chart and know at a glance what's going on. Uh, while doing that, we're going to build out a new indicator called a resistance trend line. Uh, I've got an entire video on trend lines you can check out if you want, but uh, here's the quick summary. Um, sometimes we notice that a certain price uh, of a commodity can't break through a certain price. Um, you'll see it approach that price several times and then turn around and fall. However, when the price finally does break through, it tends to go up a really long way. Uh, so what we're going to do is identify those resistance prices and place a trade once they get broken through. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is have the bot write out an HTML file that contains a simple Google chart so we can visually see what's going on with our bot. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about Google charts since that's really not the focus of this series, but I will link to their documentation in the video description. Uh, just know this, there's some stuff we throw into the header of the HTML file here. There's some stuff that we'll throw in the footer here. In between, we dump out a whole lot of data points here. Google does the rest. So now, in addition to printing out to the command line like we were before, I've got everything appending to a data point object and then writing out to the output, output HTML file. So when we run a back test, we're generated an output.html file. And then we can view that in a browser. And it looks like this. So it's a lot easier to see what's going on with our prices. So our next goal is to identify some trend lines. Uh, we can see some of these areas where a trend line uh, might be applicable. Looks like right around this area. We have a pretty strong uh, support trend line. Um, here you might say we have a resistance trend line. And you'll notice, true to our uh, model of trend lines, the third time that trend line gets hit, it breaks out uh, and goes for a huge gain. Also right here is another trend line that was broken through for a large gain. So let's break this into several steps. First, let's write some code that simply identifies local maximums such as, you know, here, here, here. Now, we could think back to calculus and make a complicated formula to identify local maximums, or we could just look at this logically. We can look at each data point and say, if the data point, point before is lower and the data point after is lower, then this is a local maximum. Now, if we're doing anything but backtesting, we don't want to do all that calculation at the end, so I've written some code to just look back two data points as the new data points come in. So here's our logic for that. So every new data point that comes in, we look and see, well, first of all, if we have more than two data points, otherwise we can't yet establish a local maximum. And then if the data point two data points ago was larger than one data point ago, and if two data points ago was larger than three data points ago, if that's the case, then we have a local maximum. Let's mark it on the chart and output that to our uh, Google chart HTML file. So let's see how that worked. There we go. It looks like it uh, worked pretty well. Uh, our chart labeled all the local maximums. And great, looks like this simple method worked pretty well. well. All the local maximums got labeled. Now let's move on to the next step. The next step is to identify when multiple local maximums have this roughly the same value. Now we want to allow some fuzziness on this. So the, this max value and this max value might not be exactly the same, but they're pretty close. So in this, I've hard-coded a value of, uh, for this chart, what seemed appropriate, 0 0.0001 tolerance. Um, you know, in future videos, we can build that into something you pass into the command line, a variable that you could change, or it might be more appropriate to have a percentage based on what some of the um, latest prices have been 
Um, definitely room for improvement there, but just to get the concept forward, I went ahead and hard-coded a constant there. So what this is saying is when a new local maximum has been identified, it goes through and checks all of the previous local maximums to see if there were any that were kind of close to this new local maximum. And it counts how many of these there have been. If this is the third local maximum right around the same value, we got, want to go ahead and establish a trend line at that point. So that's what we're doing here. Just drawing a second line on the chart, I'll explain that in a second. So now we have this red line on our chart. Um, it, in reality, this is not how trend lines are drawn. Generally, they'll be drawn straight across the chart, but we have some limitations with this uh, Google chart. So this is just kind of a trade-off I made, and at a given point, we can see what the latest trend line is. And it looks like our algorithm is working pretty well. We're kind of getting expected results here. Um, we're seeing some points that we could have uh, potentially got in on a trade for exactly for example, here a trend line was established. It was the third time. It was the third time the price um, was turned back around this value, and then the next time it broke through, and we had some large gains. Uh, same thing over here at the end. So, same as our last iteration of this bot. Um, I know from running through it that it's not actually going to make money. So I'm not going to go through the actual buying and selling part. Plus, we covered that code in part one of this series. Um, so if you want, I'll leave that as an exercise to the, to the viewer to um, add the code for when a trend line is broken to go ahead and place a trade. Okay, we've now seen the basics of building a trading bot and built out a couple different indicators. Um, our code is getting to be what we call in the business spaghetti code. Uh, it's getting a bit disorganized, not really taking advantage of the object-oriented nature of the Python programming language. So our next step will be to clean up that code a bit. Um, that's going to allow us to do something else very important. What you've probably noticed is that the indicators we've learned about so far, moving averages and resistance trend lines, are pretty cool. Um, however, when used individually, they don't really make any money. What we're going to start doing is learning how to build an entire trading system where we can bind indicators and get our bot to the point of turning a profit. Uh, so look for that video in the, in the next week or so. Or if you're uh, watching this video in the future, click somewhere around here to just go directly to it. So thanks, everyone, and happy trading.